The Oracle Network. Fact. Over 700 people have been killed by the hands of the police just this year alone. I'm Catherine Sheffield, host of the weekly podcast, A Few Bad Apples. Each week, I unravel true stories of victims whose lives have been affected by bad apple officers of the law. I bring this relevant conversation into the public spotlight because it's a way to provoke change and reform. Not all officers are bad, and in fact, I highlight a positive story at the end of every episode to balance the spectrum. A Few Bad Apples is available wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, 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 Rainbow Warriors. This is my disclaimer. Beyond the Rainbow is a true crime podcast. It's not suitable for young children, maybe not even for some adults. I tend to swear like a sailor, and I'm kind of proud of that. Listener discretion is advised. Hey, guys, just a quick disclaimer after my regular disclaimer. This episode, I had a guest, and she sounds magnificent. But my microphone and setup, for some reason, sounds like I might have an alien with me. So please bear with me and realize that my sound quality isn't the best. Thanks for the support and love always. And here we go. Hey there, Rainbow Warriors. Welcome to a What the Fuck Mother's Day edition of Beyond the Rainbow, True Crimes of the LGBT. I'm your host, CJ. And this episode, I have a very special guest, my friend Jen from Our True Crime Podcast. She graciously accepted my invitation to join me today. Hi, CJ. I am so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited you're here. Let me start out, though, by wishing you a very happy Mother's Day. Sometimes it's a tiring and thankless job, but it's also one of the most rewarding. Cheers. You do great work, Jen. You do great work too, CJ. Thank you. Cheers to us. Pat on, both Pat on the back. back. When they say it's a thankless job, they ain't lying. Woo! <laughs> but also very rewarding, don't you think? Some days, maybe. <laughs> that was too long of a pause. <laughs> Depends on how many... Uh... Beverages I have. <laughs> no, no, no. It is. It is. But it is. It's It's tough. tough. It can be it's tough. tough. Yeah. Nobody gives you a handbook to say, this is how you raise kids. And if this happens, do A. And if A doesn't work, try B. They don't do that. I've always believed that people should take classes before they have children. But it doesn't happen. Then nobody would have children. <laughs> <laughs> I also would like to wish a very happy Mother's Day to all the Rainbow Warriors. Even if you didn't give birth to a child, there's chances that you're probably taking care of someone. So a very happy Mother's Day to you, too. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. I told Jen when I started to research and started writing two stories of lesbian moms that were murdered, I decided, I can't do that. It's a Mother's Day episode. I can't talk about moms getting murdered. So we're going to present to you one of my very favorite topics, a series of stories that had us saying, what the fuck? What the fuck is right? The what the fuck episodes, well, they're a little more lighthearted, even though the stories will contain true crime. So if you're okay with that, Jan, I'm going to go ahead and start off with a story, a story that I covered on Get Vocal. It was a get vocal what the fuck episode, okay. but it was so fascinating. Well, it was terrible, but it was so fascinating to <laughs> I me. I get it. No, I, I get it. I wanted to share it in an episode. I think mostly because it's a survivor story and I, I dig survivor stories. I love those. I can't wait to hear it. Well, it has to do with a trans woman. A trans woman in her fifties was living in Minnesota. She was dealing with rejection and turmoil after being discarded by her family and friends because she was trans 
she she had just went through the surgery and stuff. The whole process, you know, it, I think it plays a little bit with your head. Oh, yeah, I would think it would be mentally and physically just exhausting. Oh, I would think so, too. Worth, worthwhile, worth totally worthwhile, but just exhausting. So with that and all the rejection, she was going through some depression. One day in 2012, she decided to visit one of her favorite kink websites. It was a site for for active BDSM participants. On this Ooh, site... <laughs> on Seriously, this, go. On this site, she met a man named David Rodriguez. And just a side note, her identity has been kept out of all media, probably just to protect her. So for all intents and purposes, we're going to call her Laura. 37-year-old David had told Laura that he and his wife were really into some kinky shit, and they'd love it if the trans woman would come visit them. Laura also owned a, she owned a hog. It's a, it was a Harley Davidson. Do they call Harley Davidson's hogs? It got me. I'm not a biker. I don't know. It was a motorcycle. But sure, we're going to go with it. I guess that's all we need to know. We're going to call him a hog. (laughs) We'll call it a hog. Okay, she had a hog. Well, David said he was interested in maybe purchasing it from Laura. So Laura decided she was going to take the trip from Minnesota to Louisiana where David and his wife Christina lived. They lived in Ajax, Louisiana, which is near Shreveport, which is kind of by where I used to live. Mm -hmm. The day that Laura showed up on her Harley Davidson, the couple seemed extremely happy to have her there. They were welcoming and they were kind. A sexual relationship formed quickly. David and Christina even invited Laura to live with them. Laura really didn't have anything in Minnesota to go back for, so she agreed to stay with David and Christina. And eventually, David took Laura's motorcycle and all her cash away from her. He said it was payment for room and board. At first... That doesn't sound cool. No, it's already there's your red flag. Yeah. At first, the sexual acts weren't bad, but soon the role-playing escalated into being very abusive. There were no safe words. Laura told the couple that she wanted to leave, and David and Christina wouldn't allow that. They chained Laura with logging chain to different areas Uh, around their mobile home, both inside and uh, outside. And then they invited over another friend, a female friend. What the fuck? Right? Because three wasn't enough. They decided to have a No, it's not bridge. (laughs) No. Obviously, they don't need a fourth. No, it's all All for their BDSM kinks. Yes. But everybody needs to be in agreement. I don't think everybody's in agreement. That's... Poor Laura. No, there was definitely one that right. wasn't. At first she was, but no, now uh-uh. she's not. She wants to leave. So they invited this friend from Shreveport. Her name was Amber. And Amber was anxious to join the BDSM foursome, because that's what it would be now. Math is hard. <laughs> Laura was branded by David and Chris. Oh, okay. This, this part. This is really creepy. Laura was branded. That means these fuckers somehow stamped a SKU number on the back of her neck. Uh, when they took their phone um, and scanned the SKU number, Laura registered on a BDSM website <gasps> as being owned by David and Christina. No way. She was theirs. Oh. That's just some crazy shit. That's what? next level crazy shit. That's, oh no. So she oh. she was now their property. Two very long years, Laura lived like this on the couple's property. As the couple's property. Not just on the property, but as their property. On top of performing sexual acts for both of her owners, Laura was assigned to other chores. Oh, and you know, I'll get to it again later, but David and Christina also had two children that lived with them. Their children. A 15-year-old and a 16-year-old. And they were witness to all of this? I could never find what they thought about all of it. But they were there for it because some of the chores was cleaning up after the kids. She had to keep the house clean. And not just after the kids, but after everyone. She had to make and serve meals to everyone. She had to tend to the animals. She installed a swimming pool. I can just imagine the poor things out there digging hole for a swimming pool for them all. She had to dig trenches, and she had to remove fallen trees. All this while she was while she was chained up and abused. Uh, I wonder they had to have told the kids that 
she was a maid. They or a house. How do you explain that away? That's true. She was always in chains. Yeah. They didn't want her running. Well, she was always in chains after she asked to leave. Oh, God. Unreal. If Laura failed to complete any of her chores, she was beaten harshly. And they would carve letters with a knife into her ass. She'd also be tased. Human urine would be thrown on her. People are sick. And she would also get chained outside in the woods. While they only gave her one meal a day and a limited amount of water. If she complained that she was still thirsty, they gave her urine to drink. Ugh. And that's they all dehumanized her. Yeah, they totally dehumanized her. That's just disgusting. Bastards. Punishment, it would go on for a few days until she could behave herself. When she was behaving yeah. herself, she was made to sleep in a three foot by five foot wooden box at the foot of David and Christina's bed. She'd been disobedient for the last couple days of her stay, or rather her kidnapping with David and Christina. It wasn't much of a stay. She asked again to leave, so she was in trouble. And as punishment this time, she was forced to live outside in a small wooden shed on the property. Which, I tell you, Jen, to me, it'd be a hell of a lot better than a three-by-five box at the foot of the captor's bed. I agree with that. I mean, she's still captive, but still... I'm totally, I know this is called what the fuck, but it, this is like Jen's in total shock. <laughs> I told you this, this story just intrigued me so much. I can see why. It yeah. In the 2000s. It wasn't even like, what? 70s. You would expect right. that to happen in 1970s when all that bizarre shit was going on. Yeah. Right? Right. That's crazy. Or it seemed it was, that's when it all happened, but. Obviously not. Here we are. As she was asked to leave again, she was out there in that, that wooden shed, and she was chained with a 35-foot logging chain, one end to her around her neck, and the other mm -hmm. end was on a bucket that was filled with cement, dried cement. So, you know, it was heavy. She, she was, didn't seem like she was going to go anywhere. But mm -hmm. damn, if Laura wasn't able to pick <laughs> that chain up, pick up that mm -hmm. cement bucket, get a hold of a set of keys for some transportation that David and Christina had on the property. Cause they had a couple of her. got into that vehicle. She drove to the next town. She found a business that was open. And uh, when she went in, she was naked and, you know, they could see all the lacerations and bruises on her. So they called up the, the sheriff and he came and actually it was the town marshal, I guess. And he came and he saw this woman with all these bruises and lacerations and the long chain still locked around her neck. And he went out and he was able to find David and Christina and their friend Amber and arrest all of them. And here, here's the surprising thing. Not that that whole story wasn't. <laughs> None of these three thought they did a damn thing wrong. And to, to that, I say, what the fuck? That's a huge what the fuck. Well, they said that the trans woman wanted to live her, li her life as their slave. And as it turns out, Jen, what? Laura wanted to have a, a role play position as a sexual slave. She didn't want but to live her whole life as one. Exactly. <sighs> so they didn't think they did anything wrong. <laughs> but she, she ended up being a servant and a slave to these people every second of every day for two years. That is unreal it, it totally is and what began as a consensual sexual thing swiftly moved to break all kinds of boundaries david and christina were arrested and they were charged with human trafficking they were charged with second degree kidnapping and mm -hmm. second degree assault amber she was only charged with second degree assault and i searched and i searched i really did search jen right, right. <laughs> Have you searched? No, no, I haven't. <laughs> Not for this case, but yes, I have searched. High and low. Well, I did enough searching for all of uh, us. Well, and thank you. Very welcome. But guess what? My search came up empty. I couldn't have, I could not find out what the couple was sentenced to. It seemed really? though that their friend Amber was out. Yeah. Amber was out because she was all over Facebook with a new account. Of course she was. Right. That's where they all go, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, new new color hairdo. Mm -hmm. uh, looked like she lost weight. 
Looking good, Amber. Still trash, Amber. You can change that color hair anytime, but you're still trash. <laughs> you know trash. that's true. Wow. So anyway, oh, David and Christina's teenage kids, mm-hmm. they were taken by Child Protective Services. And thank goodness, mm-hmm. I guess, I don't know anymore about Child Protective Services. I think they you hear do the good, baby. you hear bad. It's like cops. You hear good, you hear bad. I think they do the best the best they can for what they have, at least most of them. I believe a lot of people go into Child Protective Services with thinking they're going to save the world, but you can only do so on a limited budget. But hopefully Laura is okay. Job. Oh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it at all. It would kill me on the inside. But you know what? The ones that go into it and look at it as just a job, they're mm-hmm. the ones you have to worry about. Right. The ones that don't look at it with humanity. But then the ones that look at it with humanity just get eaten up inside like a cancer. Because I couldn't imagine going and seeing the shit that they would have to see. I think it would be a very short-term job for somebody that really gave a shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad. And Laura's okay? Do we know anything about Laura? As far as we know, Laura's okay, but she's living life, her life elsewhere. Under the radar, probably. Yeah. Yeah. God, I hope she got the help she needs and she's living best she can, man. She deserves it. She deserves it. This is just a wild story. I mean, that's unreal. You say, you guys say it all the time on your podcast. You can't make that shit up. You can't make that shit up. And for these people not to think they did anything wrong, are you kidding me? Really? I mean, nah. That's delusional right there. Utterly delusional. Crazy story. You want me to read one of mine? Yeah, let's hear one of yours. All right. This starts the day before Halloween in 2019. Ooh. A 54-year-old man named Stanley Lawton and his 20-year-old or no, and his 22-year-old lesbian daughter Shania allegedly kidnapped a woman whose identity has not been publicly mentioned. Hmm. That bitch was trying to lie about her age, Jen. (laughs) I don't blame her. (laughs) (laughs) I don't If I could redo it, I think I would lie about my age starting at like 19. Right? Me too. And then just every year go up and cut off a couple, two years. That way I'd be 24. (laughs) I just turn 30 every year and I'm fine with that. Oh, I celebrate the anniversaries of my 21st birthday. That's how I celebrate it. But now that number's getting really high, so I'm going to celebrate the anniversaries of, like, my 31st birthday. There you go. So, yeah, until that, <laughs> then my 43rd. Yeah, it's anniversaries now. All right. So Stanley and his daughter have a track record of past felonies. Are we surprised? No. We're listening to these podcasts. We know that we're not surprised. Stanley had been in prison for 10 years on account of manslaughter when he was 17. Since then, he had been in trouble for abuse of an ex-wife and their children. Not Shania, though. Shania was safe from him. Stanley uses the nicknames Big Too Sweet, T-O-O Sweet, which I'm Woo-hoo! sure that's false advertising, and Darul Jahai. I'm thinking I'm pronouncing that right. Darul, D-A-R-U-E, Daru, and Jahai, J-A-H-I. We're going to go with that. He, maybe he's Muslim or he's a... A disc jockey? He may be. <laughs> I don't know. But the or maybe first he is a bit that... Jahai when he made the up that name. Good Too Sweet? Was that Big what it was? Too Sweet. Big Too Sweet. Big Too Sweet. Oh, mm-hmm. my. And maybe you know, it's... That doesn't sound like the name of an abuser. <laughs> well, false advertising, right? Oh, there you go. Uh-huh. Stanley lives in Palmdale, California. That's where my co-host used to live. And his daughter, Shania, lives in Las Vegas, Nevada. Sin City, baby. Regardless, they sound like such a lovely family, don't they? Those that commit felony together. Stay together. Exactly. Right? Okay. Well, you can't because you've got too much shit on the other person, right? So if <laughs> you got to stay right. together. I think you're right. Mm-hmm. The woman they kidnapped was in her early 40s, and the father and daughter took her by gunpoint in North Las Vegas. The woman knows both Shania and Stanley to some degree, but they're not related. Putting the woman in their trunk, Stanley and Shania drove and drove around until they reached the place where they were staying. 
well, thinking about it's possibly Shania's place. And under the cover of night, removed the woman from the trunk and brought her inside. Once inside, both Stanley and Shania took turns sexually assaulting and raping the woman. Now, that's a really strong father and daughter. That's disgusting. Pair to tag team? No. Yeah. That's, I, I don't get it at all. I mean, there's certain things I never want to know about my dad, and I think that would be one of them. Don't right. you think? Right. right. There, you don't it's share that experience. It's almost incestual a little bit, it seems. It almost makes you wonder if maybe Shania and her father had a little something something. The following day, the woman was loaded back into the trunk and driven to Stanley's home in Palmdale, California. The woman was held captive in a room at then this home in Stanley's home for about a week, and the sexual assaults and the rapes just kept continuing. One day, she was forced outside to take the father and daughter to an ATM of the bank, the bank where she worked or the bank where she, her money was. They forced her to go to her ATM and withdraw money to give to them. Then on November 6, 2019, the father and daughter finally, tired of the, this woman, the new toy, drove her to a northwest part of Palmdale in this remote desert area near Edwards Air Force Base. And they left her to die without food or water. Just left her there. They abused her, left her. The woman was found disoriented. And of course, she was cold and extremely dehydrated by Edwards um, Air Force Base personnel. The military found her. No one was sure how long she was out there in the desert before she was discovered. And then she was taken to the hospital and treated and released. So she was in bad shape, but thankfully she survived. And Stanley and Shania were arrested woohoo! around that same month, November 2019. Stanley was held on a $4.5 million bond and his daughter a $3.3 million bond. And on August 2020, although both Stanley and Shania pleaded not guilty, because why not? <laughs> They're not guilty. Some other guy and his daughter. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Maybe it still it's... looks like Stanley will be facing a sentence as a, will be facing a sentence of up to 260 years in prison. Good. And book him, Dano. Shania, book him, all of it, every single one of it. And Shania up to 71 years for her part. I hope. I hope they never see the light of day. I, and because of COVID and the slowness of the court system, of course, that we know what, what happened, um, there's been no word of what actually, of the trial, the outcome of the trial. Or it hasn't Looking, been found yet. And, and if I have an update, I'll have to let the Rainbow Warriors know. <laughs> Wait, seriously. Okay. What what conversation do you think that? That happened. Oh, sorry, hey, say hey, again? What kind of conversation do you think Shania and Big Too Sweet had? You hey, know what Daddy I mean? O, let's go find <laughs> hey. that girl that we met, that woman we met. Let's uh, hey, exactly. take her home with us and have sex with her. And if she don't want to go, we just we'll make, make her. her. It's like, hey, yeah. Dad, you know what? I want an ice cream. Well, you know what? I want that 40-year-old. Let's get her. <laughs> I, you know? <laughs> That's, just, yeah. And then to... Go along with it? No. I wonder if Shania, not that this is an excuse, but I wonder if he, he, or he, abused, oh, he her abused her and he kind of co mentally and I don't know. I'm maybe. just speculating. Like a coercive type abuse? Yeah. Maybe I'm, sexual abuse. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking they were doing anything together. Like maybe he went in and did his thing with the poor woman that was kidnapped and then she went in. I don't know. Yeah, I just, I don't. It's know. It's, it's just a little too gross. close. And to mix your your family member with your sexual business, that's just no. a little weird to me. No. What the fuck story? Seriously, come on. Big Do what better, the fuck? people. Do better. <laughs> <laughs> well, for my last part of it, mm -hmm. for my last part of the what the fuck Mother's Day edition, I have another favorite part that I want to do. And okay. what it is, is I want to expose anti-gay anti hypocrites. Woohoo! Anti. 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 Anti and uncle. Shantae, auntie. <laughs> Woohoo! Exactly. Let's do it. I like that, too. Fuck them. Let me start off with former Alabama Attorney General, Republican, of course, Troy King. Boo. He tried to... Uh, <laughs> boo. <Sorry. laughs> 
He tried to outlaw homosexuality in Alabama. <laughs> he was even trying to make his way into everyone's bedroom, in particular their nightstands, by <laughs> outlawing sex toys. <laughs> Troy had always been a good old boy, a dedicated obviously verbal- not. <laughs> he was. He was a dedicated verbal gay basher. And then one day in 2008, his wife came home to find Troy sexually engaged with his male assistant in their marriage bed. Ooh. It appeared Troy did enjoy a boy after all. Troy's boy toy. Wow. Troy's boy toy. And then wow. trying to get rid of everyone else's toys. Fuck you, Troy. I need That's my some toy. Deep. Deep self-hatred there, isn't that? You know what, oh. though? I find that in almost all these hypocrite cases. Mm-hmm. That, that. That's totally it. They're so, in public, anti-gay, anti-LGBTQ. But yet, when it comes to their personal lives, that sucker, he's as gay as everyone else. They're ashamed you know? of something that's not even anything to be ashamed of. I don't... Right. I just I think people are more sexually fluid than we we think and especially these these i'm gonna go ahead and say it uh bible thumpers Mm -hmm. that preach anti everything anti lgbt especially don't even get me started on those they're just hiding they're hiding hard behind their word well i think a lot of it is you can't control the masses if you don't make them afraid so you've got to make them afraid well maybe it is fear that they're writing you know i well they're scared that's why Mm-hmm. They're scared to admit their own sexuality. Well, I got another one for you. Okay. Ralph Shorty. <laughs> That's his last name, Shorty. Ralph Shorty was an Oklahoma senator and a Trump campaign chairman. <laughs> he was busted for soliciting sex from a 17-year-old male sex worker. And, of course, Ralph Shorty was an anti-gay Republican who voted in favor of businesses Refusing to serve <laughs> LGBTQ members. Hmm. Shorty. <laughs> Wait. Shorty. <laughs> Shorty. Short weenie. Whatever you mm-hmm. want to call him. He was arrested inside an Oklahoma City motel room with the boy. Police were acting on a tip that they received about an underage boy with a grown ass man. What the fuck? When police got there, the smell of marijuana smoke was coming from under the door. That's another <laughs> infraction in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> not, not only did Ralph Shorty resign as senator, his wife divorced his ass, and he was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Oh, not sorry. The teen, huh? I said, I'm not sorry about that at all. No, I'm not sorry about it either. The teen's computer was seized and looked through. It showed messages exchanged between Shorty and the teen, where Ralph referred to the teen as baby boy and (laughs) offered him money in exchange for sex acts. Okay, I can't deny it was there in writing, Ralph. That's gross that the kid, it was a kid, and he he called him baby boy. So that's gross. That's that's sex trafficking right there, dude. Thank you. Got another one for you. Greg Davis, a Republican. He was mayor of Mississippi town called South Haven. There's he a was theme on to these fourth... guys, aren't there? There's huh? like one main theme that runs across this, isn't they're there? The Republican? Yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. Trump supporters. Yeah. Uh, they're in, they live in the South. There's a couple main themes here. Mm-hmm. I, oh, no, I haven't got to that one yet, but there's another one coming up, I think. And he's from Washington, the state. But Greg Davis was a Republican mayor of Mississippi town called South Haven. He was on his fourth term as mayor. So those people were just totally hoodwinked by this guy. Fourth term when the state auditors found that the mayor had purchased, wasn't a whole lot, but it was $67 worth of gay sex toys from a gay <laughs> sex shop. Well, that could just be one and this, item. <laughs> this, he did this in Canada. That's how he got away with it. But this idiot made the taxpayers front the bill. Oh. <gasps> After he was exposed, he came out as gay. Saying, oh, I always knew I was gay. But But I just wanted to hide it from everybody and have them pay for it. Or pay for my toys. My woohoos. 
<laughs> I wish I could get somebody to pay for mine. <laughs> because, right? Yeah. That shit ain't cheap. Mm-mm. That's what I'm like. $67. That could be one thing that they got half price. Right? Adam A and rabbit. Me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or anything. Go on there and you're like, damn. Yeah. They're making bank on these things. Well, here we go to the, the Washington State one. James E. West. Now, I'm not going to say too much about him because the man has died. But James E. West was once the mayor of Spokane, Washington. Is it Spokane? I don't know. Spokane or Spokane? I think it's Spokane. It's he was once the mayor of Spokane, Washington. I forgot to, to Google pronunciation. He was a conservative Republican, of course, because I mm-hmm. picked all Republican stories. He was also a military veteran and a sheriff at one time. James was a staunch supporter of banning the LGBTQ from working at schools and daycares. Now, if he would have came to Sacramento and he would have pulled that shit, I would have been out of a career. I that don't just get sucks. that. I don't get that. No, it's wrong. It is wrong. And, and it and goes I back to, to people with their small ways of thinking that all LGBT must be child pedophiles. pedophiles. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. James was busted seeking men for sex on the website gay.com. And after that, he wasn't reelected. Hmm. I don't know why. I have no <laughs> idea why. And I don't want to leave any woman off of this list. Everybody should be represented, you. right? Got to represent. Yeah. Catherine Lehman was an attorney that was instrumental in drafting the DOMA. Do you know what a DOMA is? I do not know what a DOMA is. I didn't either, so I had to look it up. The DOMA is Defense of Marriage Act, and it came about during Bill Clinton's presidency. Thanks, Bill. It stated that marriage is only recognized Mm. if it consists of one man and one woman. And this was some kind of federal purpose. So it's just somebody talking off their ass, talking out of their ass. And Bill Clinton, with his cigar, he had no room to talk. Anyway, a few years later, this woman, Catherine Lehman, she came out as a lesbian and she started to fight against the bill that she helped write. <laughs> she called her coming out an epiphany. <laughs> um, no, bitch, you were born that way. For supposedly well-educated, intelligent people, Jen, what a bunch of idiots, huh? I agree. Totally. 100%. I, you know what? And in the back of my head, I kind of think, God, I feel really sorry for them. Because they couldn't be themselves. They weren't allowing themselves to be themselves and be happy. But then they do all this stuff to self-sabotage and to hurt other people in the whole process. So fuck them. Instead of what the fuck on this, I'm just going to say fuck them. All right. Well, should we go? I got one last one. You want to do a... No, we were talking about... I was talking to you earlier about, you know, have you been seeing anybody? You're super cute. If you're dating anybody, you know what I mean? <laughs> You didn't tell me I was super cute. Thanks, Jen. You are super cute. I love you all my heart and soul. But anyway, I met my husband on a dating app. And um, I can just tell you that it's so scary how many use dating apps for evil. It's, you can, it's the new stalking grounds. Instead of Craigslist. Right? Now it's. Instead Grindr of Craigslist. And yeah. Dating apps. Yeah. Um, Stefano Brizzi, I think like a that's good Italian it. name, right? B R I Z Z I Brizzy or Brizzy Breezy. That's easy breezy <laughs> color cover girl. We're gonna go with that. He was uh, an Italian nationalist living in Britain. He's a fifty-year-old gay man with a great job, and he was a web designer, in fact. And he worked for a financial company, Morgan Stanley. You've heard of Morgan Stanley. Now, he had a lot of friends, and those who knew him said that he seemed to live a pretty normal life. And it's always those ones you kind of want to look out for, right? Because Stefano, he was a Satanist. You got that right. Yeah. He had a love for the American television series Breaking Bad, which, you know, can't blame him. I kind of loved him. Loved Breaking Bad, too. And he also enjoyed a little recreational drug use. Nothing wrong with that, either. The Morgan Stanley job where he pulled down nearly $70,000 a year and he lost it in February of 2015 because 
he couldn't stay off the drugs. That's when you know you have a problem. You know, I was once at a job where I got to, and when I was young and I was drinking really heavily at night and I overslept and I came in the next morning and I said, well, I always said if my drinking started to affect my job that I would have to quit my job. <laughs> so I'll see ya. <laughs> see ya. That's just a joke. Addiction's not funny, but anyway, different story. His addiction, though, was to crystal meth. A little different than being addicted to being a barfly. Um, he tried to combat his drug addiction with trips to a psychiatrist and crystal meth support groups. But this addiction was just too powerful. He was trying. I would suspect crystal meth. He was. I would expect that meth would just be hard as hell to kick. Stefano had said that he was raised Catholic and that his family beliefs went against his sexual preference. Hmm, shocking. Who would have ever thought? He said that Catholics in his life felt that being homosexual was akin to being Satan. <laughs> That's a big step. So, of course, being akin to Satan, so he cast the Catholic religion and his strict Catholic upbringing aside at the age of 15 and became a Satanist. He had a Satanic Bible downloaded on his computer and a Satanic journal where he wrote letters to the devil. Could you imagine? Dear devil. <laughs> Satan. Yeah. Satan, Dear my devil. Love. Today, today I bought an ounce of meth. Or I don't even know, I don't how to even buy know either. Meth, that's how you do it. Yeah. An unemployed Stefano decided to have a chem sex party at his apartment at the Peabody Estates. He got on his fetish dating sites and started to invite male users. I'm having a party. Come on over. It's going to be fun. And 59 year old gay Scottish police constable by the name of Gordon Semple responded to Stefano. Uh, Stefano gave him the address of where to go. And it seems that Gordon had been a member of the Metropolitan Police Force for 30 years. And he also had a boyfriend of 25 years. But it seemed that they were in an open relationship. Gordon's profile on the uh, app, on the dating app, said that he was into BDSM. And while Stefano said that he enjoyed being dominated. Stop right there. I got a question. And, <laughs> and maybe it's more for the listeners. Um since you're not a gay man are almost all no. gay men into bdsm please if you're a gay know. man There's... and you're listening out there rainbow warriors write me let me know because i'm just really curious about that what do you think jen well i don't know i think it doesn't even have to be just gay because there's you know there's a lot of bdsm in the straight community too in fact i was just reading an article where a woman um, was charging men. She was a dominatrix and she was charging them $150 for them to clean their house, to clean oh. her house. And I'm like, that is a kick ass oh, job. Hell yeah. Could you, hey, imagine? you pay me 150 bucks and come clean my house? Right. While I berate oh, oh, you. You know what? Yeah. I need to put that ad in the paper tomorrow. <laughs> I know. That's fucking Seriously. cool. Oh, I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> I know. That's kind of like yeah. a dream job, isn't it? I don't know if I'd want to dress yeah. in all the weather. Leather. The weather is getting hot, mm -hmm. so I don't know if I want to dress in all the leather. <laughs> you just need that, um, what is it, the monostat chub rub sticks. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> oh, you exactly. don't know what it is? It's like you put it in between your thighs so they don't rub together and you don't chafe. <laughs> so you just like put that all over so you don't chafe in oh, your leather. Oh, my God, no. For, your for $150 an hour? Shit, yeah. Why not? Yeah, I'd I'd be happy. To they're, they're the ones that are going to have to look at me. You motherfucker, get on <laughs> they're over here. They're the ones here. that have to look at me. I know. They're the ones that have to look. You I don't missed care. Missed the spot. Give me the money, pig. Lick <laughs> it. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. Give me my money. Where's my two dollars? Yeah. Seriously. I mean, that's awesome for her, that's but that's job. horrible. Well, I, well I they like it be though. I mean, okay. If they are there on their own free yeah. will, that's why the true. hell not? They're adults. If they're adults and that's what they want. When Gordon arrived to Stefano's flat, the two got busy partaking in the chemsex drugs. Now, chemsex drugs are usually one of three different drugs taken to increase your sexual appetite, I guess, or your sexual pleasures, desire, while decreasing your inhibitions. Um, the three are methamphetamine, like crystal meth and crank. Uh, these are uppers and generally increase your heart rate and blood pressure. 
GBH or GBL, sometimes called Gina, Jeebs, or Liquid Ep- Liquid Ecstasy. Never knew it was called Jeeba, Gina before. That seems weird. Have you ever done any of those? Be honest, Jen. Um, I have not done. <sighs> no. Actually, a long time ago, twice, I've tried Crank. Oh, yeah? And it had to be like back in the 80s, 80s 90s. Probably eighty, late eighties, early nineties. It was a long time ago. It, it had to be the nineties because I was with someone that I was with for a long time, um, and we got together in the nineties. But I remember the the last time I took it, I would never take it again. I was so euphoric. Oh, I bet. I stayed up all night long. We were camping, and I stayed up all night long fishing, and. There were bats flying around. And normally I think I'd be a little freaked out mm-hmm. by bats because I'm afraid they would fly in my hair or something. And I just would look at them and go, oh, they're so beautiful. I would be trying to catch I them. I was just so happy. I was so in love. Mm-hmm. No. Until I got off the drug. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I The only the hardest thing I ever did was mushrooms. That's it. See, I've never done And those. I've only did, did those once. And that was probably something that I would have done more if given the chance. Were the, were the colors pretty cool? Just the whole happy wave for me and just, I don't know, um, for me, uh, I was very careful not to look at any kind of images of myself because I would get too down on myself. But for me, it just was like a nice little wave and it made me happy and Mickey Mouse was with me on the walls. And, you know, I mean, it was just a happy what I remember it and like – uh Food tasted good. Like I could taste the salt and the sugar. And it, but you know, it was everything was intense. Everything was right? really intense. And yeah, huh. but no, now it doesn't. Yeah, I've only heard about mushroom trips. Yeah. I've never experienced one or acid trips. Too. Yeah, maybe it's acid that's real color. Maybe I know I didn't get. I don't colorful. even know. I don't know that much about drugs. Mm-hmm. I guess that's a good yeah. thing. And then besides edibles, which is now it's that is do we even can consider that a drug anymore but no i never really did anything hard all right so let's get back because i skipped a thing here so um the three things ghb or gbl sometimes called gina Gibbs, or liquid ecstasy um they will give a user a feeling of euphoria and take away any in- inhibitions um the other one is methadone method methadrone sorry i put the r anyway Methadrone, which is often called drone or meow meow, which kills me. I have a friend I call meow meow. Meow meow. Um, is it methadrone? Are you going to tell me? No, her name's Cat. Oh. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, meow meow or methadrone is a stimulant and they make someone feel aroused and euphoric. So too much of the GBH or GBL, like I said earlier, um, it can be lethal as we saw with the grinder serial killer, Stephen Port. And if you guys want to know more about Stephen Port, our little good friend, or our f- good friend CJ here, she knows all about him. She can fill you in. I did an episode There you go. Steven. There you go. Yeah, one of my serial killer episodes. Love serial killer. Way back when. Not really into serial <laughs> killers. All right. The intercom on Stefano's wall by his entrance door buzzed. Stefano, of course, was busy. Hello. Um, but then the intercom buzzed again. Stefano left what he was doing and he went to answer the door. It was another guest for his little Kim sex party. Stefano replied to the man, quote, oh, we have a situation here. Someone took ill. The party has been canceled. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. The man downstairs who was there for the Kim sex orgy party disappointedly turned and left. Stefano had work to do because someone had taken ill. Kind of, sort of. Stefano had been strangling Gordon and was pulled out when he had to answer the intercom. But shrugging the annoyance aside, Stefano went back to his business at hand, which was murdering our poor friend Gordon. In the days following Gordon's murder, Stefano is seen on CCTV at a home improvement store purchasing saws, metal sheeting, a large plastic tub, acid, and cleaning supplies. I wonder what he could be up to. Stefano boiled parts of Gordon and attempted to 
eat those parts with a chopstick. A chopstick. I can't even use a chopstick with real food, <sighs> let alone a human body. My daughter eats chopsticks or eats jello with chopsticks, but still, that's just. Uh, well, I'd disgusting. rather have jello than a than Gordon. Than Poor Gordon. Yeah, right? Uh, other parts, Stefano disposed of in the Thames River, not too far away from his flat. Still, other parts were thrown out of the apartment complex into the trash bins. Very much like uh, Dennis Nilsson, it seems. Yeah. And also, just a little side note, in London, or in England, around that area, uh, CCTVs are everywhere because it's like one of it's the finance capital of the world just fyi so there's like that even though it is big brotherish it's kind of good for safety they catch everything it seems yeah that's how uh stephen port got nailed too Mm -hmm. and um potato head colin ireland yeah also they wouldn't have caught him otherwise i don't think exactly there was such a stench coming from around stefano's apartment seven days after Gordon's murder, that a tenant reported it to the police. Very Dennis Nelson. Mm-hmm. Two female police officers went calling on Stefano. When he opened the door, he was wearing only sunglasses and pink underwear. Guy knows oh, how to party, right? Yeah. Right? Could you imagine opening the door to that? I need my sunglasses. Exactly. Stefano let the police in, where the woman found not just the source of the foul odor, but in the bathroom they found pieces of body bits floating in acid, and Gordon's head was in a bucket. Drugs are bad, people. I'm just going to say this right now. Uh, They make you do all sorts of crazy Mm. shit. Stefano told the officers that Satan had told him to kill Gordon. But you know what, Jen? We can say that the drugs made him do it, but I, I think it was something had to be predisposed in that guy's head. Well, all to, these drugs lift your inhibitions, right? But still, oh, so that means it lifted his inhibitions. He always wanted to kill, but was always Maybe. scared to. So his inhibitions were gone. I would think so. I mean, there's. I would think that we have some people are just morally not going to kill somebody for moral reasons. And maybe there are some that are very flimsy with the morals. Maybe. I don't know. But I would think if the drug lifts your inhibitions and you've kind of always wanted to. Because I was thinking it was, it it lifted inhibitions for sexual purposes, not necessarily for murdering. I would just think across the board inhibitions, you know, if to do anything. Probably right. I don't know. Stefano, of course, was quickly arrested, and uh, which is good. Good call on those officers. Gordon's DNA was found in the oven, on chopsticks, in a pot on the stove, and on a chopping board in Stefano's flat. At trial, Stefano changed up his story, claiming that during a bondage session, a leash around Gordon's neck had slipped, and he was accidentally killed. You see, when their stories change... You know that they're lying because they can't have multiple stories so. about multiple things that happen. I mean, no. pick your story, stick with it, right? Otherwise, yeah. what the fuck are you doing? You would think so, but I'm sure maybe he's Satan made him do it. He basically just admitted that he killed somebody, so he's going to change it to try to get it. Apparently, at some point, he told someone. Oh, yeah, the buzzer on the intercom rang. I had to go answer it. And then I went back to killing Gordon. Otherwise, we wouldn't know about it. Stick to your story, dude. Um, Either way. Get the fuck out. Anyway. Anyway. CCTV footage of Stefano at the home improvement store showed Stefano uh, trying the bucket on over his own head. What a bucket head. (laughs) He wanted to see if it fit. Let's see if it'll fit Gordon. Ooh, yeah. I could see him on the CCTV. <laughs> oh, that's got to go on an episode of Stupid Criminals or something. I mean, I don't even try on clothes in stores anymore. And here he is trying to bucket on over his head. Bucket. Uh, he, like I said, he wanted to make sure that it, the bucket would fit a human head. Stefano also told the jurors that he didn't want to make the same mistakes the characters in one episode had made in Breaking Bad. He continued saying that they just poured the acid directly in the tub when trying to dissolve the body, but it eroded the tub away. Remember that? No, I don't, because I never watched it. But you know what? 
did they ever go to the home improvement store and put a bucket on their head? <laughs> no. Jesse may have <laughs> off camera, but Walter wouldn't have. Jesse might have. It was Jesse's, the whole thing, if I'm not mistaken, it was Jesse's bathtub that the body fell through. Oh, my goodness. But at least he had looked up some kind of reference of how to do it, I guess. I don't know. Uh, that was why Stefano bought the sheet of steel for the tub. Uh, the prosecution asked Stefano if he thought he was living out an episode of Breaking Bad, and Stefano said he did consider it, and he wasn't without any kind of rationality there. He believed he was inspired by the idea. Had he actually took the time to think about it, he would have been much more organized about it. Do you think the judge was trying to um, determine if Stefano was of sound mind? Or I would he think was, so. Huh? Druggy. I would think that he was trying or, to figure out if he was totally if he lived whacked. in reality, the real world, or if he lived in a TV land. Yeah, or it could have just been a, what the fuck are you doing? Did you really think you could do this like they do on TV type thing? Maybe it was a rhetorical type question. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. It sounded to me like he was trying to weed out if this guy was... Um, Competent enough to Possibly. stand trial. It's a prosecutor. I don't know. Right? Yeah, the prosecutor. Yeah. What, wasn't it the judge that the prosecutor asked him? Asked was Stefano he thought he was living out. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. The jury found Stefano guilty of murder and he was sentenced to life in prison in 2016. The following year in February, Stefano was found dead in, by hanging in his jail cell. So he killed himself. I wonder if he used the huh. bucket. Bad taste, sorry. Oh, My apologies boy. to anyone. Yeah, seriously. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Could you imagine? Poor no. Gordon, all he just he just wanted to night of fun. He wanted to get away from the other and just no. have a little BDSM and he got more than he bargained for. More than he bargained for. He probably wanted to be choked for just a little bit and not a lot. Yeah. Yeah, the, I, there was See, I've heard this this case before, and mm -hmm. there was something about Gordon being into the asphyxiation, the mm -hmm. sexual asphyxiation. And see, so maybe, yeah, or the, what is it, the, the erotica, the... Uh, oh, yeah. Erotic is, is, is say it for me, erotic <laughs> asphyxiation. asphyxiation. Yeah. Yes. He could have been. I mean, and it could have been, too, that these drugs, these inhibition removing drugs had Stefano to the point where he's thinking I could kill him. I wonder what would happen if I could kill him and just like spur the moment. I don't know. But you but, know what? I don't let them blame drugs for why no, they kill people. No. And he's blaming Satan that Satan told him to. He has a little, a little what? Know. A little wiener? Satan tells him. I mean, it sounds like he, uh, I mean, he's compensating for something. Big bucket. But, did I mean, did the devil write him back in the journal? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, could they take the journal into evidence and put, dear Satan, today, at, when after I went to the grocery store. See, that's, if I was his defense attorney, I'd totally be using that. Oh, yeah. I mean, this guy does not live in reality. Here, look at his journal. He's writing letters to Satan. And he thinks he's living out Breaking Bad, a TV show, people. But then you get the people that are heavily religious and think, oh, my God, he's a Satanist. So he has to kill people because oh, Satan he's really sick. did. Put him in a You in would a, think a he's hospital. sick, but maybe the heavily religious would really believe since he's a uh, practicing Satanist that this was all in Satan's yeah. plan to kill an innocent God loving person. Just saying a good defense attorney would have built the case that this guy is just mentally insane. He's not fit for this trial even. So he needs to be put away in a hospital. Chances are he probably got a court appointed, a court appointed attorney and probably I don't know. I'd think if that would come across my desk. I mean, granted, I'm no attorney, but I'm just saying, yeah, this guy's needs to be put somewhere where he can't hurt again. Serve out his time in prison here and then take away his uh, 
citizenship, possibly. Yeah. Possibly. I don't know. Yeah. But he's huh. betcha crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Drugs are bad. That's all I'm going to say. Do what you want to do. No judgment, but just know what you're in for. I do think that the drugs might um, contribute to a lot of the cannibalism we hear about. I think so. Like the, with the whole bath salts thing. You know, people eating ears and yeah, the drugs, the bath salts, not, yeah, not, not the, like, what you get at Bath and Body Works. Bath exactly. and Body Works salts. <laughs> no, the, yeah, I mean, you always hear about that. You know, people stripping down naked, but that's because it makes you hot. And then you hear the biting. Yeah, You're trying to eat people. Yeah, it's all bizarre. I don't know, but these are all what the fucks. Certainly, what the fucks. They're all a bunch of what the fucks. Oh yeah. No doubt about that. I do want to thank you for hanging out with me tonight. I want to thank you. I've had so much fun. I hope I didn't bore your audience. Oh, hell no. Could you please tell the Warriors a little bit about your show? I uh, am a co-host with my very best friend. We've been best friends for almost 40 uh, years. Well, besides... I thought I was your bestie. You are my best f- bestie. Cam's my bestie of almost 40 years. We met when we were... um. 12 and about three years ago we went to crime con and just decided that what the hell we're going to do a podcast because we saw some of the podcasters out there and we're like shit if they can do it we know we can and um turns out we can but we're not very good at it (laughs) at the beginning no but at the beginning we had problems with audio so if you listen to our very first episodes uh, they're not good that's true cam had to get out of the closet yeah exactly well she's back in the closet now yeah She's she's back in the closet now. We were what we were. Oh well, it sounds better. Well, um, we were recording in my husband's office with all the Hot Wheels. We were recording together, and so our mics were picking up each other. It was awful. But now she's in the closet in her home, and I'm. That's what it was. She needed to go. She needed to go. She's much happier in the closet. Um, no, but um, and so I'm still here. So and plus we've gotten an editor. We splurged. Um, and Nico's made our show much better. But it's the name of our podcast is Our True Crime Podcast. Uh, we do new episodes every Wednesday. Always drops at four o'clock Central Time. You're down to an hour, even. Yeah. The time. Yeah. No, it's. Yeah, I can't do that. My my episodes drop when the wind blows. Yeah. No, we're uh, four p.m. on Wednesdays. Four p.m. Central. I, see, I can't do that to myself. That puts so much pressure on me. We record every Saturday or every Sunday. We normally try to record at least two. Sometimes due to family problems or other things, um, we only get one. But otherwise, we will bring you a an episode of a murder that you may not have heard. But we try to stay away from your Gacy's. Your- all that kind of stuff, um, because a lot of people already know about that. So we want to do, we like to do the odd stuff, right? Every once in a while, I hit one that somebody has heard about, everybody's heard about, but very rarely. I try to I do too. the lesser known. And you know, to me, I feel more for those episodes, the episodes of the lesser known. I do too. Those victims need their stories told and to be remembered and yeah. honored. Oh, yeah. Um, some of the episodes that are more popular, like I'll do more popular episodes or more popular crimes from England because, you know, the United States is very America centric, I guess, where a lot of the crimes we don't, even if it's the biggest case in England or the biggest case in South Africa, we don't know about it here. So we'll do those cases for big cases, but otherwise we try to stay. Thank you. And if you've not ever checked out our true crime podcast, make sure you do rainbow warriors. It's great. I listen to it on my walks. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet, CJ. I love you tons. And I'm so happy to, that you asked me to be on. Um, well, here. I'm so glad you yeah, were able we to need come. to get you to come on. Well, someday I we shall. need to get you on our show. <laughs> you will. I will. There's no shout. I shall. You will. I will. You shall. I shall. You're all fancy now. <laughs> Listen to you. All fancy. Happy Mother's Day, Jen, and happy Mother's Day, everyone. You too. Remember, it's not a crime to be gay. Unless you're a murderer. <laughs> <laughs>